The $10 a day child care program many parents have been waiting for is not mandatory and many daycare operators across Ontario are on the fence about opting in. Some are concerned Ontario is proposing a no frills model that may not be financially viable for the private centers and could impact quality of care. Each individual operator and each individual center will have to make their own decisions based on their own financial viability. Amy O'Neill runs a treetop children's center in Midtown Toronto and tells me right now there are too many questions and not enough answers. We cannot make a decision based on the current information we have because we don't know for many operators what that will mean for number one, what it will mean for the quality of care. Number two, what it will mean for the workforce in terms of um, wages. Back in April, child care operators received a 74-page document from the Ministry of Education outlining the funding rules, which many say is full of confusing language and lots of gray areas. Jennifer Brown operates a French immersion child care center in Bloor West Village and tells me things like mortgages, debt interest and property taxes would not be covered. Uh, we are all pretty much in debt. Uh, opening our centers. It is not a cheap affair. Um, and so, you know, we have to pay significant interest on that debt. And those are the expenses that allow us to keep our doors open. There is also concern about quality of care. Sharon Cerebo with Kids Cove and Peel Region says Montessori materials are left out and it's unclear what the base fees will cover. We want to make sure that at the end of the day, we're still able to offer the same child care that parents had. When Ontario signed the $13.2 billion deal with Ottawa, parents were told that rebate checks for 25% of fees would start flowing in May. That likely won't happen until at least the fall, and parents will only get those rebates retroactive to April if their daycare opts in. The Ministry of Education tells City News municipalities are now in charge of approving contracts and allocating funds saying in a statement the program details have been communicated for many weeks and it's strongly encouraging municipal partners to work as quickly as possible with child care operators to get this money into parents' pockets. We're creating this artificial two-tier option in Ontario. That doesn't meet the goals. Mark and Robin are among the many parents feeling let down. Their current daycare is considering opting out, and if that's the case, they have no choice but to pay full price. We were on a wait list for about two years. So if you wanted to leave and find a more affordable spot, you couldn't even do that? There are no spots, private or otherwise, right now. So to take that option and just say, okay, we don't know. <laughs> Here you go. This is, you know, you you pay 300, you pay 1600. Good yeah. Luck. Good luck. <laughs> Let the games begin. I mean, that's just it's not fair. The city tells me there are about a thousand eligible licensed daycares in Toronto and operators have until September to opt in. The city also says there will be targeted information sessions with families and the sector later this month, including a town hall on June 22nd.